Chavrin. My name is Stephen Ben Denoon, and you're watching Denoon Institute of Biblical Research, a production of IsraelReturns.com. Um, I've got a very somber and um, serious issue that I wanted to bring to your attention tonight. It is uh, a prayer request from some friends that, that watch the ministry here, uh, that follow the ministry, maybe I should say it that way, uh, brother and sister Gabe and Melinda in regards to their daughter Kaylee. We've been in uh, touch with them a little bit here by email uh, for their daughter, and it has got to the place where I'd like to mention to this to you, our friends that listen to the ministry, to have you pray with her as well. Uh, and I trust that'll be okay with the family. Uh, there again, I won't mention the last name, but Kaylee is their daughter's name. Kaylee has... Um, a new, a new issue discovered with already a brain tumor. Uh, the tumor is lo located on the pituit pituitary gland. Uh, forgive me for not getting that pronunciation just right. Uh, but now they found out that she also um, has another issue uh, with her brain along with the microedema, which is a tumor on her pituitary gland. Uh, she also has a very large growth called a, uh, and I don't know how to say this, C-H-I-A-R-I, uh, charia, I guess, I don't know, mal malformation uh, that is protruding from the base of her brain down into her spine. It's causing her headaches, blurred vision, etc. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys Besides asking you, uh, the friends that, that listen and follow the ministry here, I want to talk to you a little bit about divine healing. Um, and we know that there are, no doubt, things that could be done medically for our little sister as well. Uh, but, and, and, I, and I, I, let me say this, I always look to God to see what is His desire. What, what is the need where does people's faith actually lay? Sometimes it is in the hand of a doctor, uh, just as we had uh, this one family that, uh, and I don't say that their faith laid in a, in, a, in a doctor, but we had one family that had a little girl that uh, at the age of 10 years old was unable to walk or to speak or anything, but now is making progress uh, with multiple things, prayer, as well as some treatment that they have been doing with their daughter as well, that it seems to be uh, God is making that work together for His glory. Now, though, we have another serious situation of a brain tumor. And I've seen in life, I, don't, I haven't talked about this very much on video, but I have seen in life God answer so many prayers. And I thought maybe I would take the time to share some of these testimonies with you, that it might increase your faith. And then I want to pray for Kaylee right now, right here right on our channel here, that God will hear prayers because I'm not where Kaylee is. I'm not where I could lay hands on her and pray for her. We know the scripture says, if you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. We also know that it says in the scripture that these signs shall follow them that believe, that in my name they will cast out devils, they would speak with new tongues, and uh, if they take up any, any, if they drink a deadly drink, it will not harm them, etc. We have all these promises. We know that the scripture says that by his stripes we were healed. It's a, a, a finished work of God. But I'm also, I, I realize in many cases, though, people's faith lies in different areas. I remember one time there was an elderly lady uh, that uh, she's on, gone on to be with the Lord now, but. Um, as a friend of mine's grandmother, and she, at this time, she was in probably her late 70s, and she had a brain tumor herself. That's kind of ironic, but she had a brain tumor that uh, the doctors, when they did the MRI, they noticed it. It was in behind the sinus cavity in the brain, and they said the only way to remove it was to go through her sinuses and to do it through a microscopic surgery to get the tumor out. And... But being at the age that she was at, was a, it was very risky, and uh, you know her survival uh, risk was very low, especially at her age and doing brain surgery. Um, but she also knew that if she didn't have it removed, she would not live long anyway. And she was looking to have a little bit longer life. And the brother that was her grandson, his name was Brother Jeff, a uh, wonderful brother, He's, he was a young Christian at the time, and he so much wanted his grandmother just to take and believe God that he would heal her instantly. 
And no doubt God can do that. But as, we, as I began to talk to his grandmother, I realized her faith didn't lie in instant healing or a miraculous healing, we might call it. But as I began to speak with her, I began to realize that inside of her, she believed God and knew God could do miracles, but it also laid in the hands of the doctor. So I asked her one day, I called her Granny, and I said, Granny, if I were to pray for you, would you believe that God would take, and through the hands of the doctor, that we pray for you, that God would guide the doctor's hand, and that you would have a recovery far greater, far faster than what they say you will have? I said, would you believe that? And of course, she was so happy, and yes, this she could believe. Now, I forget now, I want to say that the doctor said that with her age and everything and condition, she would be in intensive care for at least two weeks, and then they would move her to a regular room, etc. And then slowly but surely, after about 30 days, she should be able to go home. And so she went in to have surgery, and I, of course I prayed for her. Now, one thing I remember saying to her, though, I said, Now, Granny, I, I'm not a prophet. I don't know the secrets of people's hearts. I said, but I do know this, if there's anything in your life, any sin that's not confessed or something you may have done to hurt someone, I said, I could pray for you all I want. It won't do you no good. I said, because Satan has a right to stay hold there because of sin. I said, so before I pray for you, just make sure everything's confessed up. And this little old lady, my, she poured her heart out to the Lord. And so no doubt she hadn't done anything to anybody because she didn't have to go make anything right, but she wanted to repent before the Lord. We prayed for her. She went into the hospital, had the surgery. Three days later, she came home. And the doctors were totally, totally blown away by this, that this happened the way it did, uh, and that she had such a speedy recovery. Another case that I saw was my mother, uh, back when I was young, uh, I was not, had not even started serving the Lord uh, completely. I, was, I knew that, he, that Yeshua was Messiah, and I'd been reading the Bible, but I'd not fully dedicated my heart to the Lord. And my mother was dating a man at the time. She was, my mother wasn't married, and she was dating this uh, man. And he had gotten a brain tumor. Now, I'd known this man since I was a child. Um, and he'd gotten a brain tumor the size of a grapefruit, according to the doctors. Um, and they, they had said that if he didn't have the surgery, he was passing out from the pressure in his brain a lot. And he was a machinist. His name was James. But they said to James that if he didn't have the surgery, he would not live anyway. And if he had the surgery, he only had a 50% chance of surviving the surgery because they would literally have to take off the whole side of his skull there to go inside of there to remove it. And they said if he does survive, he'll never speak again. Um, his motor skills would be severely hampered. He may even be partially paralyzed. They went into this long list of things that would, that would be his handicap. Uh, and they also told him, you'll never return to work. Now, James was probably about 48, 49 years old at the time. And so, uh, at this time, like I said, I wasn't really serving the Lord. I'd been reading the Bible, but I wasn't serving the Lord yet. And I was on my way home one night, and it was very, the very day that he had had his surgery. And I didn't know the outcome of him. But the Lord spoke to me in an audible voice and said, go to the hospital and pray for James. And I turned the car around. I was actually going in the opposite direction. Turned the car around, drove to the hospital where he was at. Not related to him. Wasn't his family. It was about 11 p.m. at night. Uh, he was in intensive care. And uh, even if he had you know, not been in intensive care, not being family, they're not going to let me go in to see him. I get to the hospital and I sat right there in the car, and I wept like a baby, and I argued with the Lord, saying, who am I to pray for anyone? And I said, Lord, I said, besides, they, they won't even let me in. I'm not his family. And I didn't hear an audible voice again, but I kept feeling something in me saying to me, go, you go. And so I did go up. And miraculously, I walked past everyone. 
and no one asked me who I was or what I was doing there. When I got over to his bedside in the intensive care, he had tubes and everything all out his face, and he looked like a mummy had been wrapped up. And I took him by the hand, and I just began to cry. I didn't know what to say because there was such a presence of love in that room. And as I tried to pull myself together, I said, Lord, who am I to pray for anyone? But this man is very sick and he needs you. And I ask that you'll do something for him. Two weeks later, he walked out of the hospital. Nearly perfectly normal. I would say within a month to two months, he was back at work as if nothing ever happened to him. I can tell you countless stories of God's mercy in divine healing. Another beautiful story I'll, I'll share with you as well, and I hope this really encourages the uh, to Sister Kaylee as well and her family. A brother named Shane, he's a, a, a deacon, or maybe not a deacon, but a Sunday school teacher, him and his wife in a Baptist church up near Pensacola, Florida. And they had invited me one time to come and speak to their Sunday school class. But the funny thing was, though, the Sunday school class was children of about the age of six to seven years old, something of that nature. Well, I kind of thought that was odd. Who, who am I to speak to a Sunday school class? I didn't speak publicly about the Lord other than to just individuals at that time. And by, of course, by this time in life, I was serving the Lord. But I get to this class and I'm thinking the whole time, Lord, what would I say to these little children? And then I felt compelled to tell them how the Lord loves them and how he can hear them just as much as if not more than he hears an adult. And so I began to tell about different children in the Bible, even like the place where Jesus says, suffer the little children to come unto me. And, and uh, just anything I could think of from the scriptures, I would talk to them about the children. And then I began to show them how that their little hands and their arms, they were like eagle wings and they could fly with them, and I use it as an analogy. And as I kept talking to these little children, there's one thing that I've noticed in life, that when I go to get ready to pray for someone, I'll talk to you, and I'm waiting to see if the presence of the Lord draws nigh. If God's presence draws nigh, I know that God will heal you. There's not a question in my mind there's something about His presence and the love that comes when He comes near that I know that He's there. And when I can tell and sense that He is there, I know God's going to heal you. And in this case here, when I went to talk, I kept talking to the children about God being able to hear their prayers, suddenly I felt His presence come in. And when I did... I said to the class, and I was really having to fight back the tears at that point because the presence of Christ comes with such love. It is a love that is beyond anything that we have on earth. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, as I felt his presence come in the room, I said to those little children, I said, would you guys like to touch Jesus today? You have to understand, they didn't know who Yahshua was, especially in a Baptist church. But I asked, so I asked them, would you like to touch Jesus? And oh, by that time, they had become little holy rollers. Their little hands went up into the air and they was waving them, yes, we would. And I don't remember Shane's wife's name at, at this present time now, but I said to them, I said, you know, Miss So-and-so here, I said, she has... Uh, cancer and she's to be operated on on Monday I said but do you know I said if you were to pray for her, I said she wouldn't need that operation and so I had brother Shane's wife come up and we set her down in front of the class 
And by this time, because of his presence being there, practically everybody was weeping. And the little children, I had them, I said, now, every one of you come around and put a little hand on her, put one of your little wings on her. And I said, take your other wing, and I want you to raise it up to the Lord. I said, and when you do, I said, I'll pray. I said, and God, I said, you pray with me, and God will hear your prayers. And so they prayed for Brother Shane's wife. And when they got through, Brother Shane was weeping. His wife was weeping. And then Shane said to me, one of the little guys that was doing the praying for as well, he says, Brother Steve, he said, this little boy was born with heart trouble. His family doesn't know what to do. He's been to all kinds of specialists and they can't, they can't do anything about it. Could we pray for him? So I told the little class, I said, look, I said, he's too little for everybody to get a wing upon him. I said, but I'll tell you what you do. I said, you come by, you lay one little wing upon that little child and you raise the other little wing up to God and say, Lord Jesus, I believe he's healed and walk on by. And so they each one did that. When it was all over, Shane come to me and he says, Brother Steve, he says, what should we do? I said, well, that's up to you. He said, well, my wife's due for surgery on Monday morning. He said, should we go to the surgery or not? I said, it doesn't matter. I said, you can go if you like. I said, it doesn't matter. It won't hurt my feelings, none at all. He said, but what do you think? I said, it's not a matter what I think, brother. It's a matter what I know. I said, God healed your wife. I know he did. I said, but it won't hurt a single bit. If you want to go do the surgery, go right ahead. And so Monday, I don't remember now what time it was, I get a phone call, and it's Brother Shane. And he's just happy as can be on the phone. And I said, Brother Shane, I said, how are you doing, Brother? He said, doing really wonderful, Brother Steve. He said, the doctor came out just a few moments ago after the surgery and told me, he says, there was no need for the surgery. He says, we went in there, and he says, Shane, I don't know what in the world happened to your wife. He said, but we did biopsies and everything on, these, on the tumor she had in there. We, we know it was there. But for some reason, it's not there. And the surgery has been a waste of time. So many things like this I've seen God do. I've seen Him open the blinded eyes. I've even seen the dead raised. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. I've had him speak to me to pray for people. I've just had him just place something on my heart to go pray for people. I've seen cancers healed. I've seen the simplest things. But I know he's still God. I've even seen him heal animals. I've seen more dogs and cats healed than you could ever imagine. He's a God of love and he loves life. You know, if the Bible says a sparrow can't fall to the ground that he doesn't know about it, then we realize he's concerned about life. Sister Kaylee, if you watch this video, I want you to know that he loves you. I think you know that already, though. But what you may not realize is that he's mindful of you. And that your condition, your health matters to Him. The Bible says, He says, I would above all that you prosper and be in good health. And that's God's desire for you, sister. And I know that when, when we're sick and we go through the symptoms of the pain, the symptoms of our sickness. It's very difficult sometimes to have faith in cases like that. But I want you to believe. Don't worry about what symptoms are. I don't know what all they could do for you medically. I hear that there's things that can be done. But I'm going to believe with you that God is your healer. And I know that He can do more than anything you could ever imagine. And I know that He knows exactly what you're going through. 
So I don't want you to look tonight to what your condition is that you're suffering with, but I want you to look to what He did for you 2,000 years ago. We know that He died that we could have eternal life. Inside of Him was God's own life that was poured out that gives you eternal life. So no matter what happens in life for you, if you've believed on Him, you'll live no matter what happens. But the Bible clearly says that by His stripes, you were healed. So what He suffered when they beat Him and abused Him on Calvary, He did that for you. That was for your healing. And all we have to do is believe it. And I know when you're going through the pains and things that go with the sickness that you have, that's when it's so hard to believe. But cast everything down. Cast everything away from your heart and your mind. And look to Him. Look at what He did for you. And I'm going to pray for you right now that God will answer prayers. And you believe with me. And then I know God will deliver you. One way or the other, He will deliver you. So anyway, and I ask all of you that watch this video, would you pray as well? Because you know, it's like the unjust judge, as he said, though this widow woman wearieth me, Yet, I'll answer. So if we really put the prayers before the Lord, God will hear and answer prayers for our sister Kaylee. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, for your glory and for your honor, Father. This young lady that has suffered, Lord, so seriously with, with a tumor and other complications with it, Lord. And Satan would just love nothing more than to cause havoc and misery and suffering and sorrow. But I know, Father God, you're still in control of everything, and I'm asking you, Lord Yeshua, be Adonai, please, O oh Lord, hear our prayers tonight, Father God, for Kaylee, our sister, Lord, and shrink that tumor, Lord, Take it completely out of her and deliver her, Father. We ask it, Lord, B'Shem Yahshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus, the Messiah, who is Mihu Adonai Kol Deval, who is Lord over all. We ask this, Father, for your glory. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my sister. We love you. And we will be thinking of you and your family and waiting to hear back that God has delivered you. Oh Hashem. Shalom. And good night. Laya Latov.